have to get the man who knows what's happening behind the scenes to tell us everything that's going on. <laughs> Yarmo Kekalainen. So nice. There he is. Welcome. Blue Jackets general manager, Yarmo Kekalainen, sitting down with us before he goes for his uh, press availability. We thank you very much for that, of course. And uh, so is the day finally over? It's just 3 o'clock. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what time did you start today, though, well, when you made uh, the Kincaid trade? Uh, that was fairly early, but uh, you know, it's the way it goes. Now we'll get some, maybe a little more rest after this, so it's good. What's it like to be in this position as a general manager? I mean, since you got here, it's been build, find pieces, um, draft picks, see if they'll grow and develop. What's it like to be in your seat uh, the past two weeks? I think it's exciting. I think we have a really good team. We have a really good core in place that's going to be in place after this year as well. Now we've added some pieces to give us a good chance to, uh, to compete this spring. Um, you know, everybody keeps talking about the uh, pending UFAs. Are we nervous about that? No, because, you know, we have some great young prospects coming and we have a lot of cap space in case they decide to walk. So, you know, it's, it's going to be uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to give our team a good chance to win here right now. And uh, as I said earlier, that we wanted to send a message to the room and to our fan base that we're serious about winning. And and uh, so we made some additions and, and we're going to give it the best shot we got to uh to get to the playoffs and then make a long run. And when you look at the players you've acquired, uh, you have to be so proud of, of your staff with Billy Zito and your scouts because, uh, I mean, everyone thinks this was a tough situation with Brad and, and uh, Bob, but you've, it seems like you've been, has this kind of been the plan all along to be like the people that add? I think it's exciting. We have a two-time Vezina Trophy winner in our net. Um, he's a great goaltender and uh, our Timmy Panarin is a superstar. We definitely don't want to give him, give him uh, to anybody else. We'd like to keep him as long as we can. And uh, we're still the same way. It's been been consistent right from the start. That We're not going to just give him away for draft picks and futures and stuff like that. And we got him on our team now. We'll enjoy it. And we can still keep working on uh, a lot of other things before the uh, July 1 arrives. And uh, and uh, But like I said, we have... A lot of great young prospects coming. Sure, we uh, use some draft picks, but draft picks take a long time to uh, to uh, materialize or mature, or whatever you want to call it. We've been fortunate with the way our scouts have done their job that some of our draft picks have actually uh, matured and materialized earlier than we'd expected because you have to always give it some time. But Liam Foodie's on fire in the OHL. Emil Bemstrom, nobody really seems to talk about him. He's leading the Swedish League in goals <laughs> as a 19-year-old. And wow. we checked today the uh, the name, 10, top 10 names that have done it at his age in the Swedish League. And you get names like Peter Forsberg, Kent Nielsen, Marcus Nasland, wow. Sedin. I'm not saying that no. he's going to be that good. That's going to be, you know, you never want to make those kind of comparisons. It was a huge uh, shoes to fill. But he's already done some something very special at his age in the Swedish League. He's on the men's national team as a 19-year-old. He's a great goal scorer. Uh, and uh, Alexander Texier is, is, uh, is having a heck of a year in, in the Finnish League. He's point per game in the last 30 games. He's dominating games there. And we're, we couldn't be more excited about his future for, for the Blue Jackets. So, you know, those guys are, those guys are coming and they're going to be here for a long time. We can use draft picks maybe a little bit later to fill some holes that that get created in the next three, three to five years, and and um, we'll have to find some uh, good players in the later rounds. <laughs> the Adam McQuaid trade that you make this afternoon, how important was you to get a, a guy like that, a defenseman that plays with edge, uh, you know, stay-at-home guy, playoff type guy? Yeah, all character. I, I think that you, uh, he adds uh, adds the edge and toughness into the back end, like you said, and and he's a steady uh, steady competitor who's. Uh, well liked in the lock every locker room he's been at, he's known for his character and and uh, gives it another right handed shot so now we got three on the right side with a right handed shot and and we got left three left handed uh, or four left handed d uh, on the left side so i think it gives us good balance and um, I, I think he'll he'll be uh, a lot of guys will like having him in the lineup you know uh, the middle of the ice has always been an issue that's been talked about here but now with Duchesne, Jenner, Dubois, Dubinsky, Wenberg. Now when you look down the middle, how good do you feel about your team right there? Very good. I think we have good depth. We have, got, we have, 
we can afford an injury. Um, we, we can we can put a guy into. We can move guys. We have lots of different combinations. Torch can try to figure out what the best way to uh, do the lines is from here on until the end, and, and the, it gives us a, it gives him a lot of options. So I think it, it's a good luxury to have, and, and you're going to need depth. How thrilled were you not to have to give up or not to give up any of those pieces that that you just spoke of? Well, they they were non-starters for us. So oh, whenever were. we were talking about trades with anybody, whether it's Duchesne or Dzingel, um or or McQuaid, Bemstrom, Texier, Foody, uh, no, they, they, that was a non-starter. So any any trade that would have required moving one of those guys was a non. That's that was a no. Is today as is there as much moving pieces on this day on trade deadline day that we think is there is that many phone calls behind the scenes? Yeah, there's a lot of phone calls. I mean, but but uh, as I've said before, I, you sort of know who could be on the move. You've talked about this for weeks, if not months, on some players, and then it gets heated up because you know that you only have so many hours before the deadline and 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 to make a decision or or make a move if you want to do so. But um, you know, you have a pretty good idea on what the other thirty teams are thinking, what they're moving, what they're thinking about moving, and who they wouldn't move. So. So no big hard decisions today. Well, we had to make a hard decision on what what was the uh, the price that we wanted to pay for Adam McQuaid and and Keith Kincaid. It was is, is a I think a great solid um, depth addition to us. We have obviously uh, Sergei Bobrovsky as our number one goalie, and but uh, with one injury, then that could be a problem yeah. there if 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 that happens. And knock on wood, but uh, Keith Kincaid is a. Uh, experienced NHL goalie who was great for New Jersey last year when they made the playoffs. Probably one of the big reasons why they did a year ago and, and he's got a lot of experience in the league and and he'll be a good addition to us. But yeah, you know, those are you know we were on the phone basically all day trying to figure out what the uh, what the uh, price was for Adam McQuaid and then we finally figured it out and, and made the decision. We've been talking for the last couple of days about your message to the team with the moves that you've made. What kind of messages have you gotten back from them? Any have any players talked to you about just how they feel now and their level of excitement after what you've been able to do the last couple of days? Well, I, th I think that you know, not necessarily directly, but but I, I'm getting the message that I think they're excited, and, and that's great to hear because we've said all along we belong, we believe in the uh, the core group there, and now we've added to it, and, and I think we've added some solid teammates as well as good players. Guys that'll fit into the uh, into the room and, and add character as well and leadership and and all those things. So that's what we're always looking for. We're we're not just looking for skill or a certain need or special teams or whatever the the hockey need would be. But we're also looking for solid teammates and solid citizens. And and I think we got that in all of these guys that we added. How excited are you to put it all to the test tomorrow night against? A pretty good division rival in Pittsburgh. Oh, it'd be great, but I, let's just face it: every game is is worth two points, and whether it's Pittsburgh or who, anybody else, you just gotta keep an even keel for it. And, and uh, we got lots of important games coming here to to make the playoffs in the tight race in, in the East, and then uh, then we want to go deep in the playoffs after we do that. I'm just wondering uh, to follow up on that. Is there really a reaction amongst teams in the same divisions? So if one team does one thing, does another team get anxious and say, oh, we have to do this or we have to over try to overpay for this? Uh, I doubt it. Yeah. I mean, I cannot speak on anybody else's behalf, but I don't think that's the thinking in our room, that if, if somebody in our division does something, then, then we have to react to that. I think that we know our needs, and, and uh, you know, we try to build based on that. But you know, obviously, you keep an eye on what the other teams right. are doing, how you're stacking up against them, and all that. But uh, mostly, keep a focus on your own team. Yeah, you did all a right. great job, didn't you? Yep. Well, time, time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, but did you guys practice great. that? No, but <laughs> that's what I always. He say. always says that, but it's true. I mean, you have to be. He knows uh, me well. Now. Yeah. You've done. Uh, you've done that a good job. That should scare you, by the way. Yeah. We're excited <laughs> to see what's happening around here. So. Yeah. Good. Yep. Good. Congratulations. Well, Yarmo, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll let you get to your uh, press conference, but thanks for stopping by. Thank you. All right. Blue Jackets General Manager Yarmo Kekalainen.